Okay, so first thing we'll look at setup. Hopefully you can see there's quite a bit of a change there in terms of that distance from there to that distance. Yeah. You, you still probably, I would say, no, I wouldn't probably change that position if I saw someone there, but that's a little bit on the further away side than we want to, but going from where you were to there is for me enough. Yeah. If you were to bring the arms in too close, you just feel like you've sort of got no space at all and you just, you wouldn't feel comfortable, okay? So you see the difference in the angle. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's definitely much more arm hang from there. And the way we've got to do that now, as I said, is setting up feet together. So every shot you're playing today, if you get on the course, every shot, whether it's a putt, a chip, a pitch, an iron or a drive, okay? Club down behind the golf ball, feet together. Yeah. Build this into your setup, so your posture, your arm hang, and don't start setting your feet until you feel comfortable with where your arms are hanging, where the club is pointing, your grip, and all that kind of stuff. And the last thing you do is set your feet apart, whether it's a full shot, the full width of stance, or it's a shorter shot with a narrower left foot half Charlie Chaplin, as we call it, yeah? yeah? So opening up that foot there, okay? Because it's going to just give you that sort of five, ten seconds of sort of prep work just to get a set for the shot better. Now, okay, are we getting some bad shots? Most don't, okay? Mm. But will we get less bad shots? In theory, we'll get less, okay? Will the bad shots be worse? Hopefully not, because obviously we're setting up in a more consistent manner, as opposed to reaching out for the golf ball, yeah? yeah. Reaching out for something out there is going to give us a lot less control. Right? If you said, to us, okay, you have to drive a car from, I know, here to North Wales, and you have to, I push the seat back from my leg there, you have to try, yeah. <laughs> you'd still probably get to North Wales, but you'd be in agony getting there, wouldn't you? Your arms would be... Stiff and sore at the end, and the quality of your driving wouldn't be as good as normal. Okay, so setting up for the thing is going to be a massive thing for you to get yourself in a more consistent position. So get the self arms hanging down, then you set your feet. And what you'll see now, without really sort of making any swing changes to this swing plane, all we said now is we're going to turn the right side of your body. Yeah, so as the club goes back now, we can see we rotate nice the chest away. So the chest now, the arm now is across your chest there, compared to this one here. <laughs> Your arm's gone way out. I mean, there's almost daylight here. As you can see that the arm's going away there now. As the club then gets to the top of the backswing, your left arm now almost touching your ear there, so the steepness there, very much sort of high and lifting. Whereas this one here now, it's much more across your shoulders. Yeah, So it's swinging on a shallower angle, which is going to be great for coming into the ground. We're not going to be digging in like a, a knife through butter. Mm. This one here, when it came down the golf ball here now, quite steep with the club there. Arms are quite a long way from the body. Whereas this one, again, this is not me, just, we haven't sort of suggested, you've just, you just done this because of the setup changes. Look at your arms there as they come in the golf ball back. There you go. The arms are a lot more natural. The club's a bit further more on the inside. So we're getting this path more for the straighter and the draw shots as opposed to that path, the slice and the ones that go out to the right. There you see, yeah? And then through the golf ball, just make your normal rotation. A good strike of the ball. You can see whacking the screen there, dead centre. And then through to a yeah, fairly decent follow through. Yeah? So... Every shot today, we'll look at your short game stuff and obviously spend a bit of time with that. Maybe if you can, keep a mini par three score. So yeah, keep your scores from sort of 50 yards and in. Just run on a scorecard and just, and just add them up and divide by the number of times you've had it and just see what your average is, yeah? It yeah. might be three, could be four, could be, it could be anything, but just see what it is. And we can then say, right, if we can get from there to there, how much will that save us in terms of shots in a round of golf? Well, mm. chances are if you play 18 holes, you're probably having a mini par three 10 to 15 times around. There's not many holes you're hitting the green from 100 yards out or more, is there? Your 100 yard shots and more get within the green area and then you're chipping on or a bunker shot or a pitch or a whatever chip and run. Yeah. So if we're hitting three greens from, say, 100 yards out and more, that's 15 times you're going to be doing a mini par three. Yes. Save yeah, half a shot, seven and a half shots just like that, you see. So yeah. and you could potentially save more than half a shot. So we can look at that in a bit more detail maybe next time. OK, so set it wise, I say for all the shots we're going to do. Start with the club down next to the ball, feet together, build your sequence and set up in terms of your long game. Make sure your right side turns around the way back so we get a better turn on the way back. And on every shot, both long and short, make sure you turn through the ball, yeah? yeah. Where the arms finish, full swing, medium swing, chip shot swing. And that'd be the same if I said to you, whack the ground hard, little little hit, medium hit, yeah. <laughs> big hit, yeah? Your body's always going to be moving there, okay? Should Does that make sense? Is that good? Trying to keep the um, left foot on the ground? No. Sorry. No? No. Okay. No. Because for you, if you try to do that, you wouldn't turn. So what would end up happening then, your arms, your body wouldn't be able to turn as easily, so you just go and do that. Because you'd be yeah. so focused on keeping that left foot on the ground. That's happened in the past. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, if, if your left foot, I mean, as you swing back here now, your left foot's fine, you turn your torso, it just helps you get from this point to yeah. the top of your back swing. Not a problem at all. Okay. If you were doing it very early, I might say, be mindful of it. Yeah. 
And if I think you were losing a lot of balance because of it, then maybe yes, but it's just helping you complete the back swing. And if your back swing may be way too long, I said we'll just reduce that. But that movement of the foot there is happening because you need it to happen as opposed to you in initiating it and kind of going and doing that. Yeah. If I turn this way, I keep going. Mm. You just have to come on the corner. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Fine. Absolutely fine. Okay then? Yeah.